in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to break down and then reassemble the Abumatic 170 for potential cleaning and repair. All right, enough jabbering. Let's just get right into it. So what I have here is a multi-tool with a basic uh, Phillips head and a rather large flat head, so that comes in handy. I got a small rubber band to put around the spool and that will contain the loose line. Then I got a needle nose plier, then a standard cobalt set of micro screwdrivers. All right, the first thing we're gonna do, kind of like the Zebcos, I'm gonna depress the push button and we're just gonna unscrew the front cover assembly. And that pops right on off, just like that. So there's our front cover assembly, a lot like a Zebco. I'm gonna kind of wrap this loose line around. I'm gonna take this small rubber band and I am going to put it around the spool. But we got our spinner head here um, we got the body of the reel and then hidden behind here is the spool. So that's where my rubber band goes. Now I'm going to restrain the handle. And we're just going to unscrew the spinner head. And it just kind of pops, breaks tension and it just unscrews off. And then those are our pickup pins. You can press here and the pickup pins retract. So that is our spinner head. Okay, looking on top of the spool, we can see here it says 1701, and then there's an arrow that says on, and then an arrow that says off. There's lettering right here that says off. Now the machining on this isn't great, and it's kind of hard to see. So we're gonna twist it counterclockwise, and it should twist right on off. Boom, so our spool pops off. There's two little cams here. So those little cams fit right into these slots here on top of your uh, spool carrier assembly. Now we can focus on the body internals of the reel. I'm gonna take my multi-tool, the Phillips head end, and I can't <laughs> say enough good things about the Leatherman Free T4. It is a great multi-tool. It is one of the best fishing multi-tools I've ever owned. The only thing it lacks is uh, a set of pliers, but it has the scissors, Phillips, flatheads, an excellent knife and I think these are actually made in America so it's pretty cool anyways let's uh, get these screws off all right so our side plate or side cover comes off and there's two screws that go with it just like that you'll notice that one screw is longer than the other the long screw um, will go in the bottom right. So when you put it back together, the long screw goes in the bottom right and we'll recover that and the short one goes in the upper left. So I'll put that in my little tackle box for safe storage. Now you don't want to lose it, but there's a little sleeve, a little brass sleeve that pops out of this push button and it's just kind of in there, you know, kind of loose. So put that together, make sure you don't lose that and we'll put that in the tackle box as well. All right, so Abu Garcia, Penn, and Zevco, they have slightly different terminology, but I'm gonna call this a cross wind block. And what we have here are two pillars. These two pillars come up and link to your spool carrier assembly, which Abu calls the spool locked board. All right, now if we look below, we have these two little side clips. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our needle nose, try and get a good grip on these bad boys. Now this is a feature I really don't like because it's hard to get a good grip on these. And honestly, like it's things like these that let me know that this reel may not be built to last a lifetime. I feel like there's a way more robust way to construct this, like screws. All right, so there is that side clip that pops out. We'll store it in our tackle box. We'll swing over this other side clip. What I do is I kind of rotate them so I can grab them. And there's the other side clip. First, we're gonna push up the spool carrier assembly, like that. All right, so now that the side clips are out, the spool carrier assembly just comes in and out, just like that. So that pops out. Drop this cross wind block to the bottom dead center. Lift it up just a little bit. There's a little can that's locked on. There we go. In theory, there it goes. 
that cross line block pops off. On the back side, there's a little channel, and that's what this little cam goes in. And that's what forces that cross line block up and down. All right, this main shaft can come down. Now, I haven't found a better way of doing it other than how I did it, so just make sure it's not bent. And this is still looking pretty, pretty straight. Still looking pretty good. If you have a better way of doing this, please let me know in the comment section below. But that works. Now that we're looking at the main gear and the crosswind block and the spool carrier assembly has been removed, we're gonna turn the reel around and we're going to unscrew, what are they calling it? They're calling it the drag cease nut. This is a drag cease nut right here. Normally it'd be righty tighty, lefty loosey, but now it's op opposite. So it'll be lefty tighty, righty loosey. And we'll see if it makes me a liar. Flat head there. There's our drag cease nut. And it just pops right on off and we'll stow that. All right, now we can unscrew the drag wheel. Boom, and that pops off. And it's an entire little assembly, so we'll stow that. And then this little guy pulls off, and that's called a click spring support. That click spring support has two washers on either end. So we'll uh, keep that assembly together. Now our handle pops off. Little handle assembly. And what just fell out was a spring. And it comes with, it should have two little washers. Actually it's one, because we already took it off of the click spring support. So here I assume is our click spring. 28, that's our drag spring rather. So that little spring pops out and there's a washer behind it. And then we pretty much have a handle assembly. So I'm gonna put this whole assembly together back in the tackle box. Now we can put a push out our handle shaft. Now you'll notice it has a little drag washer on the back side of it. So we'll put that away. Now we should be able to take our main gear out. Uh, the steel quality is not the best I've ever seen. It's kind of on par with what you would find in the um, Zepco 33 Platinum, um, which at this the price point of the Automatic 170 is right where it needs to be. All right, then we have a drag washer. We have a fabric drag washer and then a metal drag washer, so we'll store those as well. And behind those drag washers, we have these brass looking washers. That's what they look like. There's three of them in this case, but my schematic only shows one. All right, now our pinion gear falls out. Just falls right on out of that hole. And that has a um, clip. It's like a washer clip. And then you got the ball bearing right there. These ball bearings look pretty good. They're nice and sealed. We'll just put it on like that. We'll store that. All right, all we have left is our main bearing here. It's actually a very robust and nice looking bearing. I have to give them credit. That's a nice bearing. So that main bearing can come out. And then what we have is a reversing clutch. So here comes a reversing clutch. And there's a little sleeve in there. You see that it's keyed. The sleeve pops out of the clutch just like that. Cool, let me store that. So now we pretty much have a stripped down body. In terms of annual servicing and repairs, it's about as far as you need to go. A little brass collar can pop out too if you wanna lube that up. All right, let's put it back together. What we have here is this brass sleeve. We'll just put that in. So that sits down. Then we'll take our roller clutch. This is how I'm orienting it. There's like a gap. So it has this uh, styling feature and then there's like a wider gap on top. That wider gap on top is gonna face up in this scenario. Boom, it just pushes down. Then we have our roller clutch sleeve. So that's gonna go in our roller clutch, just like that, pushes down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my main bearing here. I'm just gonna tag it with some grease and this is gonna help hold some washers later for assembly. Well, I just put my fingers in it, but it's tagged, there's grease on it. I don't wanna put too much grease on it. And that pushes on down. All right, now we can take our pinion gear with its main bearing there on the bottom. We can slide it into our body sleeve there. We can take the opposing bearing. That goes on top just like that. Now we're gonna take these three brass washers. Now the diagram I got only showed one of these. So I don't know if this is just someone at the factory just slapping this thing together, but three came out. So I'm gonna put three back in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start tagging these so they stick together and they'll help uh, align my handle shaft. When I go to put it back together. So we just grease them up. 
I'm just gonna make them stick to one another. And there we go. So now they're kind of glued together with the grease. Those are gonna go on top of my bearing just like that. So those three are gonna sit on top of my main bearing just like that. I'm gonna take some more grease. I'm gonna tag these guys here just like that. And now we're gonna take our metal washer. Now there's a disconnect between the schematic and the diagram, the actual picture. The actual picture labels this washer as being fiber, but it's not. So I'm gonna stick with the diagram. And this washer has a raised, one side is like bulged out and the other one is indented. So the bulged out section is gonna to be towards our main bearing. So I'm just gonna slap that right on top of these brass washers. Don't shift around too much. Just do it a little bit. Just like that. Now we take our fiber washer. I'm gonna lay that right on top. Of the metal washer. And we're gonna line it up in position. You might be thinking, why don't I just put everything on this uh, handle shaft and put it all in together? Well, if you do that, this main gear will interfere with your pinion gear. And when it's assembled, there's no way to insert that pinion gear with this main shaft in uh, that I'm aware of. Okay, so now we're gonna set our main bearing back behind that pinion gear. And we're gonna lay it down on all our washers, just like that. Now we're gonna take our main handle shaft, which has another little drag washer on the back of it, and we're going to force it in there. Now you'll notice the shaft is keyed, and uh, our main metal washer is keyed, so I'm gonna try and orient it the way it should be, so they align. I'm gonna apply some pressure, boom, and it goes in just like that. See, that's where I was showing you that. With this main gear in, this this pinion gear can't come out. So you kind of have to like stack them and then like bring the main gear in and then the handle shaft. And then this little uh, roller clutch sleeve just popped out, which is no biggie. I can just go in on the back side and insert that bad boy back in. Boom, back into the roller clutch. So that's not a big deal if that little guy pops out. Cool, on to the next step. All right, now it's time to reinstall our handle assembly. So we're gonna take our handle assembly it's keyed, so just rotate it until it goes home. Really wiggle it in, make sure it's seated all the way. Then we take this little keyed washer. You should have three of these total. Place it on the shaft, rotate it around until it slides on there. Push that down. Then we're gonna grab our little drag spring. The drag spring goes on. Drag clicker spring, whatever you wanna call it. Then we have a, we have the second keyed washer that goes on top that. So that little spring that we just installed has a little steel washer on the bottom, one on the top. Now we're going to take our click spring support. This is what our click spring support looks like. And there's still a little keyed washer that's stuck to it on top. Now we're going to put our click spring support on, just like that. Now we have our star drag, star drag, like that. And I'll tighten it down all the way. And it'll compress that spring. Give us more room to work with. Drag cease nut. Little nut with reverse logic. So lefty tighty in this scenario. Get it go. I don't want to over torque it. There you go. Now our handle assembly is back in. Now it's keeping our main gear and our handle shaft from falling out. It's nice and tight. This drag wheel's working. Tightens up. All right, now we're gonna flip the reel over and look at our main gear. I'm gonna rotate the handle until that little brass cam right here is bottom dead center. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our little shaft here. I'm gonna press it up into the pinion gear. What we're gonna do is that middle hole, we're gonna make sure this channel faces the main gear. So it should only be a smooth crosswind block facing you. And we're gonna push that little shaft in that third hole. Oh, this thing great. This is the best way I've found to do it though, is I take a
kind of have to throw some upward pressure. A little bit of upward pressure. Just kind of try and get this cross one and block, get over that cam. Get a pain in the ass. There we go. That's up and over. There we go. So this is the my least favorite feature about this reel. I feel like the only way to get this cross wing block up over the cam is to like apply some upward pressure and kind of not bend this little shaft so much that it's useless, but it's such a non-precise reel that it really doesn't matter if it's slightly twerked. So now we're gonna take our spool carrier assembly, come in from the top, line it up the holes, push it down, and it's gonna go into the two holes of the cross line block on either side. And it just pushes in just like that. Now our spool carrier assembly is ready to accept our clips. All right, now we gotta take our little side clips. We're gonna grab the skinny end with our needle nose. Just like that. So that's what it's gonna look like. Now the spool carrier pillars have these little lips that are now exposed beneath the crosswind block and we're just gonna push them on. So now it's on, not all the way. So I'm gonna get a better grip and then boom, pops on with the needle nose. I like to put my thumb on that spool carrier and we're just gonna pinch it in. And it just pops right in. So now our spool carrier is permanently connected to the crosswind block. We got our main shaft down the middle and it appears to be working. See that spool, spool carrier is going up and down. Cool. And we're gonna take our thumb button sleeve and we're just gonna slide it in there and that should keep it from sliding out on us. I'm gonna put a little grease down the middle too. There we go. So now our thumb button sleeve is in its little respective hole. Now there's a little notch here right above the screw hole. And that's where your plastic uh, thumb button is gonna reside. That's where it mounts to. Push this main shaft up, put the lip above the body frame on the left side. So while it's off, that's what it's gonna look like. We need to take our side plate, curved side goes on the left, and we're gonna install that. We're gonna hold it together with our fingers there. And there's the thumb button all snugged up. Now you have two main body screws. The longer one and the shorter one. The longer one goes in the bottom right. That goes through your thumb button pivot point. We'll just tighten that home with the micro and we'll tighten it up with the old tight tool here in a second. And then the small one goes in the upper left hand corner. And we'll tighten that home. Cool. Now the side plate is on, your thumb button is attached. Now we can take our spool, arrow says on, and that'll be counterclockwise. Earlier in the video, I misstated counterclockwise and I believe we rotated clockwise. So these little cams here on the bottom of the spool are gonna go into these little holes here. Just gonna line those up, tighten it. All right, it's tightened up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little flat head and we're gonna take this little rubber band off. There you go. So that little rubber band comes off. All right, I'm gonna hold my handle. We're gonna take our spinner head. We're gonna put it in the pinion shaft. And before we do that, make sure your uh, pinion gear bearing that goes on the top is where it should, should be. If it's not in there and it falls out on accident, your reel's gonna run like crap. So just tighten that spinner head down. And right here, it's kind of slipping. You should be good. So it seems to be working just fine. Now we're gonna take our line. We're gonna run it through the hole of the front cover assembly. Just like that, pull it out. Now being careful, we want a little bit of tension on that line. So we don't want it to get jam up our threads. So I put the front cover on. The line's still free. Now we gotta line up our front cover and twist it home. All right, make sure everything works. Got some drag coming out. Let's tighten it down. Very tough, impossible to pull it out, that's good. 
Got yeah, some tough drag there, so good. Back it off a little bit. There we go. It's a good drag setting. Now we're gonna press our thumb button. It releases the line. Now we're gonna reel in. We're gonna take our fingers, hold the line, let those pick up pins go out. Go like that, kind of like that. I'm just gonna reel that line in. So we have just checked the functionality of this reel, indicating that I did not give you bad <laughs> advice and that it is assembled correctly. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you all get out and go fishing. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye.